So I just want to give a brief um, introduction um, and then leading to two, two case presentations and then um, discuss some therapeutic options, options. And then again, you guys can interrupt me at any time during the presentation. So we all know percutaneous mitral valve repair with the mitral clip system has emerged as a safe, um, very minimal invasive therapeutic options in patients with three plus or four plus MR and deemed high surgical risk. Um, percutaneous mitral valve repair has demonstrated efficacious, efficacious MR reduction, um, improvement in CHF symptoms, as well as, um, some imp as well as improvement in LV reverse remodeling. Functional TR, um, which is often not talked about, actually frequently occurs with um, patients with mitral regurgitation, as actually brought up in this discussion um, earlier today. Um, the prevalence of moderate to severe functional TR ranges anywhere from 8 to 45 percent in patients undergoing surgical intervention. Um, surgical series of mitral valve repair have demonstrated that both the presence of baseline moderate to severe TR as well as progression of functional TR actually results in neg negative impact and outcomes in patients compared to patients with minimal or no TR baseline and post intervention. So current guidelines recommend tricuspid valve repair in patients undergoing mitral valve surgery with either one severe TR, mild to moderate TR with a dilated annulus, or evidence of RB dysfunction. Currently, we have no therapeutic options for the tricuspid valve in patients with significant TR and concomitant MR deemed too high risk for surgical intervention. So what do we know from the transcatheter realm in terms of um, tricuspid regurgitation, both pre and post um, <clears throat> mitral valve repair with the mitral clip system. So um, Ono um, and his Italian colleagues actually looked at this, and they looked at both echocardiographic as well as clinical variables in patients undergoing mitral valve repair with the mitral clip system. And they demonstrated, or they found that it, although patients may have significant MR at baseline, um, that a lot of this actually goes away. This was a series of 150 patients. A lot of this actually goes away when the mitral clip actually goes in. And this was in, um, all these patients were functional, by the way. Um, but what remains true, which is um, congruent with the surgical literature, is that if you do have moderate to severe TR baseline, your outcomes are usually worse after any form of mitral valve intervention. As demonstrated here at the bottom, in the bottom right corner, a lot of these patients have, if you have moderate to severe TR baseline, you're going to have more hospitalizations, subsequent hospitalizations for heart failure. So I want to kind of um, demonstrate two cases of um, mitral clip intervention. The first, um, let's see, how, how do I actually play this? Do I have a clicker here? Oh, here we go. Thank you. So again, dual valve pathology. Um, this patient at baseline had um, moderate um, TR and severe MR and um, was going for a mitral clip um, intervention. Next slide. So the patient had successful mitral clip placement with one clip. I don't know if you can play the videos. Thank you. Where? Oh, thanks. All right, so the patient, this patient had degenerative MR, had successful mitral clip placement, which was pretty much uneventful. Well, when you looked at this patient's echocardiogram four months after their procedure, you can see almost complete resolution of their TR. Um, um, contrast that with another patient, um, 71 year old gentleman with ischemic cardiomyopathy, AICD, um, and cabbage with functional MR referred for mitral clip. Again, dual valve, dual valve pathology with severe MR and at least moderate TR. Um, for Dr. Navidere's and AICD in place. And um, just to give you a little bit more focus on um, his tricuspid valve here and his um, at least moderate um, tricuspid regurgitation. This gentleman had his mitral clip placed and actually required actually three clips for actually successful mitral clip placement. Um, had his mitral clip, which was uneventful. And if you look at his um, tricuspid regurgitation uh, three months post intervention, it wasn't really much changed. And this gentleman actually had three subsequent hospitalizations for um, acute decompensated congestive heart failure. So the question I have for the audience is, um, what do we do with, with these patients? Um, 
especially if they're coming in primarily with um, repeat episodes of decompensated congestive heart failure, especially with right-sided symptoms, and we've actually cured the left-sided problem in terms of a, a mitral valve repair. Um, again, I'm biased. Um, I'm in, going into interventional cardiology, so I think um, this... Uh, Stop there. So, question for you. So, mm -hmm. post mitral clip, you said the three clips. So, what was the main diastolic gradient? Because the main diastolic gradient was five. But, but five at rest during an echo, and we don't really know the ambulatory diastolic gradient, I suppose. Cause Pardon me? We don't, know, we don't know the ambulatory diastolic gradient, right, when they're walking. I don't. And, all right, so this. Uh, this, I don't remember. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. So the challenge basically is TR with a pacemaker post mitral clip. Correct. What if anything do we do about it? So that's that's kind of the focus when we have these conferences. Is there usually is a clinical question, a dilemma, and we need some guidance going forward, and we sort of pull those in the room of, let's talk about it. So let's do that. Yeah. So what what I found was interesting, actually, looking at this literature, is that um, despite uh, significant one year mortality of almost forty percent. In the U.S. alone, less than one of these one percent of these patients with mild or severe TR actually undergo surgery. And after surgery, a lot of these patients actually have recurrence of their TR, uh, up to almost six percent at five years. And really, as far as transcatheter therapies, we're kind of we're somewhat limited in patients with um, a degenerative um, prosthesis in the tricuspid position. Um, so there are um, some future therapeutic options in place. Um, in, the, in Europe, they've actually used the mitral align system in addition to the mitral clip system in the tricuspid position with, again, in small series, but with um, safe and effective outcome, effective short-term outcomes. And I think that might be um, something that we, sh we can actually look into. I think we have that on pending IRB approval here. Um, but as um, Dr. Shaw is actually alluding to earlier, is that we have a lot of challenges with the forgotten valve. Um, quanti quantifying TR is actually has been somewhat difficult, especially given that there's no consensus in actually how to actually quantify TR, um, as well as um, we're not really sure when to actually intervene on the valve. Do we use pulmonary hypertension? Do we use RV dysfunction? There's not really um, a consensus. Um, how do we pick these patients, um, and when do we wait for um, to to actually intervene on the valve? Do we wait right after the, the per do we do it like, for example, like surgery concomitant with the mitral valve repair, or do we wait afterwards to see whether or not they have um, further um, worsening of their tricuspid regurgitation? Um, there's also the complexity of the tri like the tricuspid valve. We have three leaflets. If we were to use a uh, the mitral clip in this position, how many clips should we use? Especially in these patients who have um, um, significant LV dysfunction, have um, defibrillators in pace. Um, and then how do we actually measure study endpoints? Um, it's, what's nice about TAVR is that aortic stenosis is a lethal disease. So, it's, so when you do an intervention, you can actually see therapeutic benefit. In these patients with tricuspid regurgitation, they, have, they all have shortness of breath. They all have multiple comorbidities. Looking at an endpoint uh, and actually and actually have a study conclude within this century might be quite difficult. So that's my talk. We don't know what we've we've fixed the mitral valve. So I, yeah, I would say we we change the amount of regurgitation, but whether we fix the left-sided heart problem is probably a. Uh, a statement that we can't make. I mean, he, there was LV dysfunction, LV dilatation, RA. I mean, his L enlargement. All those the one case things. I presented again, his LV did improve marginally, but so. Yeah, I mean, there's still significant left-sided dysfunction in that patient. Um, I mean, the big question on the left side of this, uh, with three clips, uh, you just want to see what, what really Exercise, I would love to see what the 
It, it'd actually be pretty easy to do, because isn't he got a defibrillator and cardiac resynchronization? I mean, you could bring him to the lab and dial up his heart rate. You know, he's probably set at like eight, 60. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but, but I don't think you'll make the MS much worse. I mean, in the lab, when we play with people physiologically and turn up their heart rate, the, the mean gradient in the MS, if you go from a heart rate of 60 to 90, might go up by one or two. We don't see a very drastic climb. We do measure, well, uh, we do have the LVEDP, but we're, uh, that'd be part of the measurement because we're measuring the we're measuring LA and LV at the same time. But I think the the, the, uh, the progression of MS is a concern in somebody who gets three clips because every clip creates a tissue bridge, and that tissue bridge gets a little bit bigger over time because it gets endothelialized. And now you put three clips, each of those tissue bridges getting bigger, and the closer they are, you know, the sure. more they can sort of blend together. And we've had at least it, one case. A it's a theoretical concern, yeah. it, it, but there's no relationship between number of clips and mitral stenosis. I mean, we have had it with one clip. Yeah. Right, right, because the, you use more clips in bigger valves. Right, right. So in this case, I mean, I don't, in the, the second case you showed, in terms of decision making, there really isn't one. The patient wasn't a, a good candidate for mitral surgery, so pretty well, they're not going to be a candidate for tricuspid valve surgery. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh -huh. So, yeah, we'd have to see did his did his pulmonary pressures really get better and right. it's. In the tricuspid valve after something's been done on the mitral. Both of those are just fraught with hazard. And, yeah. and so whenever somebody refers me or something like that, I say, call me anytime, 555-5555. Operators are standing by. Sean, thanks for doing that. And I, I think you pointed out some really good um, issues and in, in everyone discussing it. I mean, it's really not clear that tricuspid regurgitation is the problem here. A, B, there's no there's, there's nothing we can do in the cath lab right now to fix tricuspid regurgitation. I think the threshold to treating, um, for me, per, you know, thinking about this a lot, is physiologically where should the tricuspid, have, tricuspid regurgitation have the biggest effect, and, and really that's in the liver. Uh, you know, so when you start seeing ascites and some sort of coagulopathy, then you know if you're going to throw a Hail Mary, that, that'd be the time to do it. You know, short of that, it's Lasix and, and just trying to keep them out of the hospital. They mitra clip the mitral, the tricuspid valve, and what do you mm -hmm. clip when you do it? That's the question. Um, yeah, there's a uh, surgical bridge, procedure called the K where we just take that, you know, the, that uh, inferior leaflet and just throw it out and make it a bicuspid valve. You can clip the, you know, the anterior leaflet to the, to the inferior leaflet and the inferior leaflet to the septal leaflet and just kind of make that one solid thing. It, it, it's been done, um, you know, a handful of times with, with sort of unpredictable outcomes. The, the primary limitation, and Steve and I have been sort of working on this, is, is imaging. Um, it's, it's hard to see the tricuspid valve, uh, you know, with, with a catheter in there, particularly with a TEE. Um, but, you know, we, we did a, a recent animal study, and it, it was more successful than we thought it would be. So we might be moving in that direction. Without question, the tricuspid valve is a frontier and probably will remain a frontier for a while. <laughs> Somewhat limited by the imaging, and that is a big deal. Much different than the mitral.